Hey y'all, come on in. Welcome back. We're going to continue on with the little clutch purse. Along with update on Big Key's antique radio. But, uh, we've got some of the sub-assemblies done now. Wanted to start off with the little violets. I did these very similar to the rose. I found a little violet pattern that we liked real well. And then uh, found a leaf pattern that we liked real well. About as authentic as what we could find in my book anyway so I've got three of them and this is not going to be the actual front flap but it'll it'll give you the idea anyway but what we'll do is I'll come in I think I've already stated that we're going to need to make it a little bit bigger because this one won't even accommodate a cell phone but what we're going to do is and I just tooled these out like I would anything else and then I cut them out separate and uh, did the design on them while it was wet with the super sheen that's the time that I molded them and let them dry and then what I did to attach the violets to the leaves is thankfully you can't make it out because I wanted to disguise it but I just came in with my hole punch and I punched two holes in the center where the yellow is and I used my white thread then and you can see where I attached them on the back side of the leaf there on the stem use some glue there to make sure that uh, that it wouldn't go nowhere I didn't really show any of this part of it because it's just wide open what flower do you want to use what leaf pattern do you want to use it's the same technique so I didn't show any of that basically what we're going to do is we'll position them somewhat in this fashion and then we've got enough room on the on the larger piece there to where I can come in now with some smaller butterfly stamps there's one of the little butterflies and then I got uh, I got a bigger one and we decided instead of trying to do the vine over here and tool in another leaf or something like that then we'll just come in with these and just place them maybe a couple of the big ones and then some of the smaller ones and we're going to go with that that's what we chose anyway so anyway that's the violet part of it and then for the center section with Judy's help again there were two pieces of leather that were in that box that are ironically the exact size we needed for like a driver's license student ID or credit card so we took some deer skin this is the color that we decided to use for it we took some deer skin to form the uh, the interior the center section uh, got a zipper up here on the top but when it's all finished you'll have a big open pocket back here on the back you'll have a zippered 
center section pocket in the middle and then on the front side you'll have a full pocket again up here a couple of places for some identifications or a credit card or a debit card and then we also added a little pocket here for I don't know car keys or you know whatever it's not going to be tall enough I demonstrated or I used my uh, my glasses to see if uh, if you could put a pair of sunglasses in there or something like that but they're going to be sticking up too tall for the flap to come over but you'll have a big pocket up front a zippered pocket in the middle and then this big pocket on the on the back so if you want to drop them in there you'll be able to and then you'll have uh, have a place to drop your cell phone in is the intent with it anyway and that's about everything that we could think of to include on a clutch purse style just whatever just the essentials of what you'd need to go out to dinner or for the young ladies go to school class or whatever just carry the basics of what you need and then uh, I cut the I cut the center piece now that's going to give it the width now all of this I'm cutting out of out of one of my sides of leather I'm not using a kit on this one <coughs> No, excuse me for those of you that want to just buy sides of leather and uh, uh, and not not buy the kits I like it because uh, I like doing it that way because I can design them and make them whatever our style wants to be whatever we want to make it and uh, we feel like we can fit it better to the customer that way uh, again going back to a picture something like that if it's clear enough where I can get a pattern off of it then I'm good to go but we're using the double loop stitch on this so what I've done is I'm using this tool here you can get these at Tandy, probably other places I haven't looked. I've had this for a number of years now. But mine came with three different size rollers. In other words, there's a difference between uh, where the tips of these are. This is the largest one that I've got. And I'm doing the largest one because I do intend to use the double loop stitch, the lacing, and I wanted the holes spaced as far as I could for the, for the lacing. But I wanted to show you something on here. But what it'll do, yeah, good, it'll, you can see it. But what it'll do is it'll come in, you'll make your measurement off the edge wherever you want it to be, and you'll start at one corner, and then you'll just follow your pencil mark, and it leaves these little indentions in it. What you want to do then is I'll come in with a hole punch, and I'll just line up on each one of these indentions and that's where I'll punch my hole through for the double loop stitch. Now you can do this very same thing if you're just going to be using thread and not the lacing. But here's what I wanted to show you folks. And this is easy to, to forget. But whatever you do, whether it be thread or whether it be the lacing. Now this is just me. This is what I do. 
but I think it's pretty important. Because this is going to be one edge over here, and this is going to be your opposite edge over here. Now it's very, very tempting. This, you you got to really remember to do this. But I started down here in this corner, and then I went all the way down this one edge, down to this corner. You see, I'm right there on my corner mark. Then I went across. Now what, if you're not really, if you're not really paying attention, then you're going to just accidentally or whatever, you're just going to turn it like this and come back down this other side. Here's what I want to show you if you do that. If you don't come up here on the opposite side, see this is where we started. This is the original little, little indention in the leather. If you don't come back up here to go down that opposite side, I want to show you what will happen to you. See how far off we are? I just turned the corner just so I could demonstrate this. I just turned the corner down there and I came back up this side coming this direction. And then I went up here, just like I started over here. I came back over, lined up on my corner, and went down the same direction as I did over here. But you see our difference, how far off we are. Now, if you do that, This side is not going to match this side. So when I cut the front section and the back piece out of it, if I don't have these holes lined up with each other, then I'm going to get over here. I'll just use this piece again as the example. Maybe I'm going to be matched up on this one side. But when I get over here to attach this strip to the other side, I'm going to be off. Maybe as much as one whole diameter or one whole distance. So this is, you need to pay attention to this part of it. But I wanted to show that to you. So when you do your layout on your leather, Or you go punching holes and stuff. Now what I'll do, I'll use this center piece. This is going to be where everything else, the front piece, the back piece, the front flap, everything that's going to get the double loop stitch in it is going to key off of these holes that are in here. I'll decide which end is going to be my starting point. I'll come in maybe six, seven, eight holes, and that's where I'll start my lacing. But I know that I'm going to be then, when I get around to the other side and I get ready to finish this, that all of my holes are going to be lined up. That's what you want to watch for. Alrighty. So with that, that's where we're at. I'm going to get these holes punched. I'm going to go ahead and get this colored. And then uh, this section here. Let me get it out here. But this piece then will come in 
and it'll get glued to that center piece. And then from there, I'm not going to pre-punch the holes in the uh, in the liner material just yet, just because it's still very flexible, very. Deer skin's not near near as stretchy as uh, what we found that pig skin to be. But uh, since I don't have a machine to pre-punch all of the holes in it, then I'm gonna glue this to the to the center strip here first, and then I'll come back in with the hole punch and I'll punch through in order to get my get the holes where they need to be on here. And I'll come in and do a final trim on it down here at the bottom. Get it all lined up with this strip of leather. Get it centered and then uh, that piece will be ready to go. And then we'll move on to uh, then we'll move on to doing the uh, the front face, the uh, back piece and the front flap that'll come over the top. So that's pretty much what uh, just kind of give you an idea I hope as to uh, as to how I do it when I'm laying out from uh, from scratch it's just me uh, it's just the way that I found that uh, it works best for me but again that's just the way I do it uh, hopefully that'll give you some ideas and uh, you can uh, you can try something like that. Uh, I think I've already stated in one of my other videos that uh, okay. it's pretty rare now that I'll buy a kit unless unless a customer sees a kit and that's what they want. Well then, you know, they're the customer. I'll buy the kit and I'll, I'll make the kit. But uh, I encourage the beginners and the ones that are just now getting into it uh, I really encourage y'all to uh, to start off with the kits. And, uh, get your ideas on uh, there on what you want. I think it'll uh, I think it'll help you. So anyway, with that, I'm going to continue on with this. I've got to get it colored, get the holes punched in it, so it's going to be a little while on that. I've got a uh, big keys radio case uh, tore apart. I took the hardware back out to work with him because he wants to try doing something called electrolysis to uh, there to remove the rust from uh, from the metal, and then he wants to try his hand at uh, doing some plating on it so I don't care to get into that <laughs> so I told him to be my guest so uh, I'm not going to bring those other pieces I've got them all disassembled and everything but it's so old uh, the parts are all dusty and dirty and stuff like that I don't want to bring that into this environment while I'm working this clean leather so I'm not going to show any of that, but when we get ready to start making the pieces for the case and doing that, then uh, I'll show you my plan of attack for that. So, anyway, with that, we always like to end with don't be mean. If you're not willing to treat Jesus that way, then let's not treat each other that way. We're here to have fun, learn some things, show you the way I do it, make some stuff out of leather, and make people happy. So, uh, just a little insight there for you. When you go to use one of those little rollers there to, to make your indentions in the leather, when you're going down the sides, make sure you start down the sides on, on one end. Don't go down, make the corner and come back because you're going to be off. So, and with that, till next time, Adios.